because on my test day oh my gosh it was horrific like the test anxiety every question is equal so if there's something that's really hard literally skip it and go like flag it and go i got too fixated on one question and then you get to a really easy question but then there's 10 seconds left and it's a flop so don't be unfocused don't be nervous don't be distracted just try to block out what's going around i didn't do the mocks shame shame in hindsight it's like was the working worth it worst comes to worst you can do the bmat <laughs> you need to be thinking out of the box and like i wasn't even thinking in the box i was like away from the box because i was working but i still got in so it's fine um, it kind of got to the point where points that i thought i was stronger with br i flopped in because i was i just thought i'd be fine when you get in like before verbal reasoning you, re you need to focus because those they're massive paragraphs. Like some universities will just go from the top to bottom. Some will have a cutoff and then you don't apply to anywhere where you're lower than the cutoff because they won't even read your personal statement. You're oh gosh, dragging myself here. I got in, so. Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the UCAT mistakes you should not be making and the things I wish I knew before I sat my exam last year. So the number one thing that I didn't deep when taking the UCAT is that it is an exam that you can prepare for and some people have been preparing for this for like three months, two months, like on Medify there is a reason that there's an, like you're able to get like a season's pass because people are literally taking this so seriously and are doing the absolute most and like that you need to deep it like the competition is fierce everyone is doing the most and you need to be doing the most so for context um last year i wasn't even gonna apply because i didn't get the predicted grades that i wanted so i was like you know what i'm not sure if i'm gonna apply but my dad was like you know what just just do it you know it will be good it, it'll be a good experience uh for next year and i ended up getting in to medical school so it just shows that your school isn't the end of your story your grades on the end of the story every you can work through anything and you can still get in so you might flop but you can still get in when you apply strategically so myself um last summer i was working so 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 much and i had two jobs um one was in an undisclosed um place that i don't want to say but yeah i'd been working there like all year and over summer of course that's when everyone's taking a lot of shifts so i was doing many many hours i was getting my bag i was not doing the time that people are doing and even now like i've been watching some videos about yuka and someone said that you're meant to do four hours a day like i was not doing anywhere near four hours a day and then my second job was in a care home and this was a great job. It was very, very grueling. It was very intense. It was very emotionally draining. But at the same time, it was literally some of the best work experience I could have had because you're literally working and you're among all the nurses, among all of the care staff and like feeding all the elderly people and like dealing with their dementia and things like that. Yeah, that was really, really intense. And to get there, I had to get a train and then I had to cycle to the place and then it was just a very very long journey so it's like some days I'd wake up at six and then get to that job for like eight whatever and then I'd get up really early go to the first job and then eat my lunch on the train and I'd literally be doing UCAT like on my phone on on the train and obviously Medify is not made for <laughs> it's not made for phones so I'd literally just be there like doing some questions on my phone and like be holding my bike you know it was just crazy like I was not in an optimal position in practice I was I did a lot better than what I got in the actual test so you know whatever but I ended up getting I ended up getting 610 in VR 650 in DM and 650 in QR and then I got 610 in abstract reasoning which I didn't expect because I was doing really well in the test and then the situational judgment I got band 2 which again it was a bit of a flop compared to what I was expecting I thought I'd get like a, so a solid like 650 and above but you know I flopped a bit so that's fine but so um in hindsight what I could have done and will be doing to get a better score is to realize that the UCAT is a IQ test and it's like you need to be taking the UCAT in a systematic approach because if the UCAT was 
three hours long everyone would get 800 everyone would get 900 everyone would be happy and everyone would be getting in but it's not it's only two hours so you need to know the timings for every single question like for abstract reasoning you should only be spending 14 seconds per question and that is that like it's really so time pressured and you need to be thinking about that you need to be taking the UCAT thing you need to be having a kind of plan of what you're going to do and it's very easy to just say oh yeah I'm going to do all the questions I'm going to try and do as many questions as I can and that is great you should be trying to do as much as you can but one of the main things that I didn't know that people were doing is that people actually learning about all of the questions and all of the ways that they should be going about doing things like with abstract reasoning there's like scans oasis which is like you know an abbreviation so that you can remember all of the patterns but for every single section you should have a framework of how you're going to be answering the questions instead of just going at them you know so it's complete it's ex um so I think it is so, so important to learn the actual ways that you're going to be answering the questions and understanding what the questions are asking of you and things like that. So with the verbal reasoning section, it's like, why are they making us read all of these things? It's like, as a doctor, you're going to have to be making, as a doctor, you're going to have to be reading academic journals, you're going to have to be reading so many things and just having to quickly understand and summarize those things so ace the ucat asked me to review his guide so many pages worth of tips and as i was reading this i was like people know this like i was actually speechless because the creator of ace the ucat got 835 which is like insane considering it's out of 900 and a band one he's made an ebook which is 14.99 or completely free if you're on free school meals bursaries and anything like that think in the mind of the examiner and not just as a random person that's walked in there after spending the whole summer working it really emphasizes the importance of flagging questions of like really keeping an eye on the time because at the end of the day all of the questions are equally scored and it doesn't matter if you spent like two minutes on a one question that you got right in qr you could have done like three easy questions in that time with ar when i was at home i'd literally finish and then have time to go through any flags questions but in the real thing i literally finished the last question and then it ended and that i just knew i'd scored badly because it's so so important to flag and to just be following all of these acronyms and things that will just guide you in what you're doing i really recommend just trying to deeply learn about the UCAT and the question types that you're going to get instead of just going straight at it like I did and I feel like that's what separates the people that score really highly because once you understand what you're doing then it's easier to do it faster and that's that's what you need in the UCAT the knowledge and the speed. Now with my UCAT preparation I have got a word document on AR and things like that so I can just really see types of patterns that I'm seeing and make notes of them so that I'll just be more active when I'm doing the questions and you need to be looking at the questions you did right as well as wrong and be looking at the time that you spent on the ones that you got right as well because it's all about the timing. They've just analysed how the UCAT works and all of that and I've just made notes on it and highlighted it. You need to be thinking out of the box and like I wasn't even thinking in the box I was like away from the box because I was working so um <laughs> just to put this out there right considering the amount of work that I did I didn't do that badly like I think it's like 60th percentile so it's not the most competitive but I got it so it's really important to not get complacent and for me with verbal reasoning I was scoring really highly and I was like I've got this and obviously you know it's really important to read read science journals read articles read the BMJ read so much speed reading this is such a major key. in the actual exam the VR section the passages that you get are literally like huge and it's just so overwhelming so do not get complacent um not gonna lie um i did a ucat official mock and then my computer crashed and i was like you know what i'm never doing this again and that was a mistake because they need to be putting yourself in things that are harder and you need to go on the official website to see the ones that are really difficult situational judgment as well it's a lot easier on medify so definitely get a more diverse range of resources so that you're covering every aspect. So one thing that I'd like to point out as well, because I thought I would have done better, 
and one of the reasons why is the whole test environment and that's why I'm so so happy that they're allowing people to do it at home. Pushing back my test day because obviously I'd been working so much that I wasn't getting the time because on my test day oh my gosh it was horrific like obviously you can't blame them you can't da 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 but in my test center um, it was quite large and I was actually right next to this man who was doing his driving theory and he had Tourette's so that was very very disruptive throughout the test and I feel like that kind of threw me off a bit and obviously it's not his fault it's not anyone's fault um, but that threw me off so on the day you need to be prepared that you could like it could start raining you could be like dripping wet like there's so many things that you can't control so you just need to be at the point where you're so like above it all like you're you're centered like maybe even bring noise cancelling um buds if you allow that and just like really focusing like if everything went well i would have gotten the 650 that i wanted and yeah um i feel like especially because i did worse on the first and the last section you need to take your one minute breaks and really use them to calm yourself down to center yourself and just to remember all of the things that you need to be remembering and all the frameworks that you should be using so you just really need to just be in the right mindset and just know that you can do it and it's not that hard to get a high score like they average it out like there's like a score converter so you don't actually need to get that high to get a high score like, every question is equal so if there's something that's really hard literally skip it and go like flag it and go and i literally did not do that in the real test i got too fixated on one question and then you get to a really easy question but then there's 10 seconds left and it's a flop so really just put yourself in the right mindset like breathe in the test center they give you a laminated sheet instead of a whiteboard which also threw me off a bit because it wasn't rubbing out very well but you know it's like all of these things that people don't know about um and the context of the exam that you sat it in flop so don't be unfocused don't be nervous don't be distracted just try to block out what's going around you and i suppose in my situation perhaps i could have asked for more extenuating circumstances or something but it's fine it's fine so with your practicing you need to make sure that you use the calculator and use the memory because i did not know how to use the memory because uh, I didn't use the memory and like small things like that really add up like you need to be doing everything you can to be on it you need to have accuracy and time from the ebook he gives you times where you should know like oh yeah I'm halfway through so I should have this much time left and I feel like that's really really important to keep on your mind because every question is equal so if it's too hard just skip it and go flag it and go and make sure you're using all of the shortcuts and all of that so that you're just optimizing your time and get used to using the number pad so that you know you can t use your hand that's another thing he mentions just have your mental maths on lock yes as i was saying before i was literally working so 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 much i've read that now the people are meant to do minimum 80 hours and i probably didn't do anywhere near that and another thing i didn't do was finish going through all the medify resources and I didn't do the mocks. Shame, shame, shame. In hindsight, it's like, was the working worth it? But I still got in, so it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, if you have, I guess now I doubt people are working as much. Really prioritize your, your practice and know that with practice, you can do amazingly. You can get like 800, 700, you can do it. So just practice, put time into it, use frameworks, be intentional with your practicing and make sure that you practice on your weak bits and for me i thought that um, qr was weak for me and then i ended up bringing it up to 650 um it kind of got to the point where the points that i thought i was stronger with vr i flopped in because i was i just thought i'd be fine the test anxiety because like you walk in there there's like so many people everyone's like well one person was loud and like you get your photo taken id da, 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 da. it feels like a lot of pressure when you get in like before verbal reasoning you, you need to focus because those they're massive paragraphs and you need to just be on it and be focused so that you can answer them well so to summarize the things that i did that made me flop working too many hours practicing on my phone not spending enough time 
not doing enough mini mocks and mocks and tracking, see what I did wrong, not using a systematic approach, not researching enough for situational judgment, read all the BMJ articles, the good doctor, I ended up reading them later but it was too late, um, not flagging difficult questions and coming back to them, not timing things properly, losing track of time and not noting where I was, being starstruck in the room, being unfocused, being un distracted, being overly nervous, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm dragging myself here, being very distracted by the man next to me, <sighs> can't help that. I did the bare minimum, oh gosh. <laughs> that is just the summary of things that you shouldn't be doing to flop. I just wanted to emphasize what I said in the beginning, I got in, so regardless of my flop score my average score from my very average score i still got in so you need to apply strategically like don't just say this school so i'm gonna apply like really look into their thresholds look into their bands look into how they separate people once you've done the ucat you can't change it so just be ready to be ready to rumble be ready to apply strategically and where you'll get an interview some universities will just go from the top to bottom some will have a cut off some universities will give their offers from top to bottom literally so like higher score to the lowest um like to the until you get to the cut off and it's really important that you don't apply to anywhere where you're lower than the cut off because they won't even read your personal statement you'll be straight in the bin um so really apply where you know that you can get in and don't worry too much about it once it's done it's done and you can get past that you know you can get past the bad score and focus on the rest of your application because there's so many aspects to the medicine application that it's not the end if you completely fail even if you get like a bad four which is like quite rare like you, you can apply to universities that don't look at your band and so many things like that so completely bin your uk cat and do the bmat so don't worry so thank you so much for watching this video i hope it's been a big help to all of you medicine applicants i've done a few more videos on medicine and i hope that they can be helpful to you to know that you don't have to be the most perfect student to get in so everyone stay safe and i'll see you in my next video